Hello? Where is everybody? <laughs> I cannot hear you, I don't know what's wrong. <clears throat> okay, let me just type in... in Omega. That something is super weird. Something is super weird. There's a story. It's all made of stories. <laughs> um, let not thy right hand know. That's right, that's the way it goes. Let not thy right hand, thy left hemisphere, know <laughs> what this hemisphere is about. And one of the very conspicuous things with these people is how much they know of what is wrong. The extraordinary articulacy, once you begin to discover, begin to be able to hear the nature of the poetry that they're using. Just like understanding like how to go about being able to cope that. He was always fascinated with like Indra's net. Like he went on these, like he has a pretty cool like like story about like every step of the way he got like these little nudges. He, he went to like a conference and then he heard this one guy talk about learning machines and then talking about how this other guy wanted to hyperlink and hyper hypertext uh, the whole internet. And it's basically that the whole internet is like this one major document that like everybody is adding to so he says like these early ideas of the internet that he got exposed to and like almost every step of the way like he he wanted like he was messing around with networking before like the web and then all of a sudden he got an opportunity to work with like a company that was like doing it and then so he was one of the engineers that kind of how that company how to like see the early internet right there and like every step of the way like he said that oh then he read that article about Jared Lanier and then he's like oh okay I gotta move to San Francisco he said eight years since he took like really good acid and then he said he finally took it and finally was ready like him personally was ready to accept whatever he needed to learn and I, I guess like before he probably like personally wasn't ready like it was just like Everything was a perfect storm for him to be able to be in this moment to like, I guess, unveil like how to build VR. I think he did it via uh, acid, but that's like not that's a more common story than, than people realize. That was one of my favorite things that I learned at like the psychedelic conferences that um, the creative potential of psychedelics for like professionals. There was this early study. And I don't think it got replicated later, or I know the, the one uh, psychologist that does it, he talks about it a lot, but I don't think they're, they're doing any new research on this. But so a professional has a, a technical thing to it's like the uh, equation that they haven't solved in a year, or a design for a house that they haven't, their what do you call clients haven't accepted. And there's all sorts of different things in between there, uh, lawyers or, or whatever. Um, and oh, the one oh, that I, oh. I think, the one that, it was like a 90% like success rate, but the one that I liked the best, which kind of illustrates um, the Mark Pesci one, is that there's a designer, this architect, that was like six, seven months like, you know, designing this like mansion, and the client wasn't happy and kept on telling him, you know, things that he couldn't understand what the client wanted. He thought, I thought this is what you want. There's always little things that he thought he would. But anyways, so he, he's frustrated, and he takes LSD, and he does the therapy. And he says that, like, when he was able to let go, he was literally inside the house. And then he, like, intuitively understood what the person was saying all along. And not from, like, his perspective, but from their perspective. And then, like, he was able in, like, real time, 
you know, like in his vision, rearrange his old design to what the client actually wanted. And so then after the, the thing, he goes back and redoes a, a new draft and then he gives it to the client and the client said, oh my God, this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. And then he kind of like smiles, but it's like, yeah, because I saw it. <laughs> and like, that's like the thing of like what Terrence McKenna says about like true hallucinations. Is, oh, how do, how do you call it a hallucination if it's like tied to like reality and you're actually getting it? You know what I mean? Like, they could say that, you know, Mark Pesci was just a hallucination about the doors and then that led him a VR language. But it's like, okay, but he got information that he used to actually make something in real reality. It's like the double helix DNA. Yeah. You know, yeah. discovered the DNA double helix structure was a vision that was had on LSD. You ask it a question, like, and you feel like you set an intention, or you, you say, like, here's what I'm looking for, like, this is the experience or the puzzle I'm trying to work with. It'll serve you if your intention is, like, pure and honest. Yeah. LSD does it in a really, like, I don't know, in a different rhythm than, than mushrooms, but they both, they both do it. DMT, too. I've done DMT, like, maybe a couple times, it's vaporized. It doesn't necessarily answer my question, but it, not the way I thought my question would be answered, but it gives me a new steps. <laughs> it gives me a couple steps further. But it's amazing, like it's yeah. like practical the thing can be, like mission for a client, design project. That's like the thing is like when I talk, and I, and I, I remember this like early on, and, like it's with a lot of things, but like I remembered it almost all the time dealing with this like weird satori d thing right in minds and like creating this thing and then like you guys that i like present my work to like understand it better than like say people that I interact with in real life you know i'll be at work and then they say oh what are you doing you know you have two days off what are you gonna do and then i'll be like oh i don't i like sometimes i, I don't think i can like tell them exactly what i'm gonna do like oh nothing i'm just gonna hang out and it's like no i'm gonna like create these like weird little digital art pieces because like i'm like possessed by the logos <laughs> like i don't know what that i don't know i can tell them exactly what i'm really doing I've never got to exactly that <laughs> i you know a couple times you know like i'll be reading the book and then this is always funny like Anytime I read a book, they're like, oh, you're taking a class. And then I'm like, no, I'm, I'm reading because I like to read. So, like, if I see if they're curious, then I tell them that book about the book. I remember when I was at that comic bar, I go into my own little rant about, like, the weird and Beowulf and, like, what it means and, like, you know, all, this, all that kind of stuff. And then after I was done, like, doing my little rant, they look at me and they said, are you a teacher? And I'm like, no. Oh, I was like, I thought that was like part of like your lecture or something. I was like, no, I just read like academic article on it though. I was just like was curious about it because like someone mentioned it on my artwork that I did, and then like I found out like it has like this way deeper meaning. And, like even I used the word weird before that point as like a mystical, magical thing because I'd be like, man, I had a weird dream last night, and the dream would have to be like a deja vu dream or a dream about. Lizardland, or you know, like when I say I have a, a weird dream, I mean like a dream that's out of my frame of reference. It's not like I don't even know how to begin to describe some of that stuff. But uh, going back to like psychedelics, I did, actually did uh, not that much. I, I don't know how much my friend ended up giving me, but it was it was probably like 2.5 grams of mushrooms. Anyways, uh, it was it was kind of fun, but like on the other end of the shrooms, you know, kind of going back because my whole mind has been on the vapor test, was it got, got me to think, what, I, what I've been saying is, uh, I was telling Nicole this all the time, like, squaring the circle. So, like, it helped me to, like, like bring it all together. I'm like, okay. Because I was talking to Elliot about how, what was it, written language and how it changed things. And then I went back to, like, uh, when they were like reciting Beowulf and they had, they had memory palaces and all this kind of stuff and then like we lost that and then like all of a sudden I'm thinking oh these VR rooms could be memory palaces of 
Will and Miss Burroughs, In Memory Palace of Robert Anton Wilson. And then I'm thinking like this way of engaging with like information and having a game could be like so much powerful to like integrate certain concepts to people without them like you know what I mean? <laughs> if you if you have like this weird little guy that is like telling you actual philosophies of like strange things and like actual things that happen, Mark Pessy taking LSD and he wrote the VR language and you know your little companion will help you give you you can ask it questions like oh who wrote whatever you know the VR language or you know it would be like a series of like connected things and like that is connected to the collage and then there's a, like a deeper game that I'm playing where I'm seeding the seeds of hiding later that I can make a clue like there's a hidden account that I've been like talking about and like Corey on one show said oh I'm gonna go look for it and then he goes and he's like in in um, Meat Wars trying to figure out which is my alt account and he's like fuck there's too many memes that are posted in, in, in Meme Wars he's like I'm not gonna scroll through all that I don't know how much he scrolled through but he came up and then I just started laughing and I was like you can figure it out like there's enough enough plot points to like kind of figure out who it is and I say, like, okay that could be one clue in, in the room I think that would be kind of like funny towards the end like so Dory D has an alt account or no actually I think I'll do it the other way it's like who was the first account to like remind the vapor test post or maybe leave a comment there and like I'm gonna bury that post because I'm not gonna like really like announce the vapor test channel until the 23rd but in like the meantime, I'm building up um, these collages and building up. Um, uh, I'm gonna like store the videos there to be like easier. But it, it'll, it'll be like like a month. It's gonna be on Imagineer, but I'm gonna use that like an archive so that later it's gonna be like a cheat sheet to the to the vapor room because then you're gonna go back down and you know, see like okay, these are like collages having to do with Will and Miss Burroughs. They could kind of use that as like a Rosetta Stone to unlock the room. <laughs> and so like, like after, actually it was even before, but it was, it was mainly after I took the shoes with my friends and I was like, oh, where's your computer? And then I just started downloading like GIMP and started downloading PDFs of uh, Mondo 2000 <laughs> and then started making collages right there. Like I took over my friend's computer. God damn it, you need a better computer. Like I'm gonna, eventually I'm gonna buy a computer and like store it here. <laughs> so, so, so when I when we do next time we get really out there, I have some somewhere to put it down. The center of the cyclone is the rising, quiet, central, low-pressure place in which one can learn to live eternally. Just outside the center is a rotating storm of one's own ego, competing with other egos in the sphere's high-velocity circular dance. As one leaves the center, the roar of the rotating winds deafens one more and more as one joins this dance. One center thinking, failing, being, one's own satoris are in the center only, not outside. One's pushed and pulled driven states, one's anti-satory modes of functioning, one's self-centered house are outside the center. In the center of the cyclone, one is off the wheel of karma, of life, rising to join the creators of the universe, the creators of us. Here we find that we have created them who are us.